Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. The main purpose of today's video is to look at something called the Markov equation and to find positive integer solutions to this equation. And so the Markov equation is this equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 3xyz. But before we do that, I want to look at a somewhat simplified version of this equation, which was on a Moroccan math Olympiad. And that Olympiad asked us to find all natural numbers, in other words, positive integers, x, y, z, satisfying this fairly similar equation. So it's pretty similar. We've replaced this 3 with a 2, but the types of solutions are quite different here. Okay, so anyway, let's get into the solution of this Moroccan math Olympiad problem before we look at the larger problem of the Markov equation. Okay, so let's maybe bring this up here. So let's suppose we have x, y, and z, which are natural numbers satisfying this equation. So such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2xyz. Okay, nice. And now let's quickly notice that the right-hand side of this equation is most definitely an even number because we've got this multiple of two here. But since the right-hand side is even, that means that the left-hand side is also even. But what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that at least one of these numbers, x, y, or z, are even. Well, in fact, we've got a couple of possibilities here. We could have one of them even and two of them odd. We could have two of them odd because adding two odd numbers gives us an even number. We could have all three of them even. And those are actually the only possibilities. If we have two even and one odd, then the result will be odd. And if we have all three odd, the result will also be odd. But we actually don't need all of that structure. All we need is the fact that one of them is even. So let's take that data right here. So at least one of x, y, z is even. Great. And now since x, y, and z are playing symmetric roles in our original equation, we know that at least one of them is even. We might as well set x equal to the even one. So let's do that. Let's set x equal to 2 times x1 and then plug that into our original equation. So that'll give us 4x1 squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4x1yz. Again, just plugging this version of x exhibited by 2 times x1 into our original equation. But now looking at our new equation, we'll see that this term right here and this term right here are both multiples of 4. So that motivates us to reduce modulo 4. And so if something's a multiple of 4, then it's congruent to 0 mod 4. So let's see, reducing mod 4 will give us y squared plus z squared is congruent to 0 modulo 4. But that gives us more information about y and z than we might think. And we can do that by looking at the, and we can see that by looking at the perfect squares mod 4. So let's look at n and then n squared modulo 4. So we only need to look at 0, 1, 2, and 3, given that we're working mod 4. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, but 4 is 0 mod 4. And 3 squared, well that's the same thing as negative 1 squared mod 4, so that's going to be 1 mod 4. Or you can think of it as 9 mod 4, but 9 is 1 more than 8. But the takeaway from this chart is it's impossible to add two perfect squares and get something that's 0 mod 4 unless they started out being 0 mod 4. But if the squares started out being 0 mod 4, then the original numbers started out being even. So to summarize all of that, we know that y and z are also even. So we might as well write y as 2 times y1, and we'll write z as 2 times z1. Okay, 
Now we'll take all of this and plug it into our original equation. So by all of this, I mean this even expression for x, this even expression for y, and this even expression for z. So into our original equation will give us 4x1 squared plus 4y1 squared plus 4z1 squared equals, so we'll have 16x1, y1, z1, when all of the multiplication has been taken care of. Okay, but now we can divide both sides by 4, and that'll leave us with x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared equals, let's see, 4x1, y1, z1. But now we can play this entire game again using the fact that we know the right-hand side is even and so on and so forth. And what we'll see is that x1 equals 2 times x2, y1 is 2 times y2, z1 is 2 times z2. In other words, they're all even. And then we can play that game again to show that x2, y2, z2 are all even as well. But notice that if x1 is even, then x is a multiple of 4. But then if x2 is even, then x is a multiple of 8. But since this extends infinitely, that tells us that any power of 2 divides x. And similarly, any power of 2 will divide y, and any power of 2 will divide z. So in other words, we have 2 to the n divides x for all natural numbers n, or maybe I should say non-negative integers n. But that means in the prime factorization of x, we've got infinitely many copies of the number 2, but that clearly doesn't make any sense. So that brings us to our contradiction. What did we contradict? We contradicted having a solution in the first place. Okay, good. So this was our a bit of our warm-up. Now let's look at our main goal, the Markov equation. If you're looking to start your own domain, personal website, or online store, look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace offers easy-to-use, drag-and-drop features that make web design a breeze. Squarespace has tons of templates that offer awesome customization options with no coding required. Although, you can access the code if you'd like. There's even easy LaTeX integration like I have on my website. So what are you waiting for? Go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And one last time, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now we're ready to look at our Markov equation, our main goal here. And let's start with the kind of trivial observation that the triple one, one, one is a solution. That's because one plus one plus one is three. So pretty easy stuff. Now we're gonna prove the following claim, which will give us more solutions. In fact, it'll give us infinitely many solutions, which is interesting because our warm-up problem, which was quite similar, had zero solutions. So this easy change from two to three change the number of solutions from zero to infinitely many. Okay, so the claim goes like this. If the triple x, y, z is a solution, so is the triple x, y, three x, y minus z. Okay, so how can we check this? Well, it's as easy as just plugging this triple into our left-hand side of this equation and showing that it reduces to the correct version of the right-hand side of this equation. Okay, so let's get to it. So I'll just say, let's note that we are given first that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 3xyz. That's what it means for the triple xyz to be a solution. And then we can calculate x squared plus y squared plus 3xy minus z quantity squared, and hopefully that reduces. So maybe let's put a then here just to like bridge those two ideas. Okay, so multiplying out, we'll get x squared plus y squared plus, so we have 9xy, x squared, y squared, minus 6xyz, and then plus z squared. Okay, so that's multiplying that binomial out. Okay, but now let's notice that this x 
squared plus y squared, and then this z squared will add up to 3xyz by our initial assumption. So that'll leave us with 9x squared y squared plus 3xyz minus 6xyz. Let's maybe underline this in green to color code that those terms in the previous step combine together to give us 3xyz. But now we can do a little bit of symbolic manipulation. This simplifies to minus 3xyz, and then we can factor some stuff out. We can factor a 3xy out. So let's factor a 3xy out and then observe that we're left with 3xy minus z. Great. But comparing that with the left-hand side, we see that we have x squared and then an x here. We have a y squared and then a y here. And then we have this object, 3xy minus z squared. And then the object not squared over here shows us that this new triple is a solution. Okay, so now that we have a single solution and a process for producing more solutions, we can actually build infinitely many solutions. So let's look at maybe the chain of solutions that that's formed by this process, and that'll finish everything off. So previously we found a solution to our Markov equation, the triple one, 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 and we proved a claim which will allow us to form more solutions. And now let's look at the process of forming more solutions. And this is one of the processes. There's actually one more symmetric version, which we won't cover here. Maybe I'll just kind of hint at. So if we start with x, y, z, then we just proved that x, y, 3x, y minus z is also a solution. But if you apply this arrow operator again, which, let's see, replaces z with 3xy minus z, you actually end up back with your original triple. So that means you can't just apply these things over and over again. That being said, we, what we can do is use the fact that all of these solutions will be symmetric in terms of x, y, and z because of the symmetric roles x, y, and z are playing in this equation. So the process goes like this. We apply our claim, which produces a new solution, and then we'll switch the second and third coordinate and then apply our claim again. So this is kind of an intermediate step, which doesn't get written down when we're figuring out the numbers. So let's see. So we're switching the second and third coordinates. So we have x, 3xy minus z, and y. And then we're applying our claim to that. So that's going to give us x, 3xy minus z. And then the third coordinate is like kind of more complicated, but that's okay. It's 9x squared y minus xz minus y. So it is three times this first one times the second one minus this third one. Okay, so now let's do a couple of steps here. So let's start with our trivial solution, one, 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 and we'll apply our claim. That'll give us one, one, and then three minus one, which is two. Great. And then, well, notice if we apply our claim again, we'll just get one, one, one again, which is not super interesting. So what we'll do instead is do like a shadow switch. So let's do that in yellow. We'll switch this to one, two, one, and then we'll apply our claim. So if we apply our claim to that, we'll have one, two, and then we'll have three times one times two, that's six minus one, which is five. Great. So the solution chain looks like this. One, 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 two, one, two, five. And now let's do it again. So we'll do a shadow switch here of one, five, two, and then we'll apply our claim to that. So let's see, we'll have one, five, and then we need 3xy minus z, so that's going to be 15 minus 2, that will be 13. And then let's maybe do one more for good measure. So we'll do our shadow switch. That'll switch this to 1, 13, 5, and then applying our claim, 
will give us something like 11334. And let's stop it there. But one thing that I do want to notice is that we've got Fibonacci numbers all over the place here. So one is obviously a Fibonacci number, two is a Fibonacci number, five is a Fibonacci number, 13 is a Fibonacci number, and 34 is a Fibonacci number. So something's going on with the creation of Fibonacci numbers inside of these triples of solutions to the Markov equation. And you might look up here at this shadow switch, which we're calling it, and ask, well, why am I switching Y and Z? I could just switch X and Z. And in fact, you can. And that'll give you a whole other branch of solutions to this. And maybe I implore you guys to maybe fill out like a large tree of solutions based off what we've seen today. I think it's a fun exercise. And that's a good place to stop.